Hello, thank you through fans. I'm back with another video and this time as I mentioned in my previous video I put the link somewhere here. I want to run some tests between each of these Apple MacBooks. This is the MacBook Pro that I talked about. I recently got it in my hands. I have to return it very soon so I'll try my best to get some tests running. So this is the 2019 MacBook Pro with two Thunderbolt USB Type-C ports. So this is the base model. It has the 1.4 quad-core Intel i5 processor, 8 gigabytes of RAM and 250 gigabytes SSD storage. And I will compare it to this MacBook Air, that is the Apple Silicon MacBook Air M1. It has 8 gigabytes of RAM too, and it has the same 250 gigabytes of SSD storage. So basically, these two are the base models for each generation. It will be interesting just to run some quick tests like the SSD speed test, the boot up test and as a special bonus I just want to render and export a 2 minute 4K HDR video that is taken with my iPhone 13 Pro Max and see how long does it take for each MacBook to render and export this video with some color filters and exposure corrections and just see how fast does it work. And as I mentioned in my previous video, the main difference between these computers is this one with the Apple M1 processor inside is completely silent just because of the fact that it has no coolers inside. So this one has the fans inside, so this computer usually gets very hot very soon and you can't say that about this one. So I will fully charge each of these computers so they both are 100% in battery. And speaking of battery life, they both have actually identical battery cycles. This MacBook Pro, that is the 2019 Intel i5, it has 133 battery cycles and this 2020 M1 MacBook Air has actually three cycles less it has 130 cycles so these are in the, at this point very identical when comparing the batteries so that will be interesting how fast will they go from 100 by rendering a video and let's see the results so macbook air m1 should be the clear winner in the battery life that's for sure you can just check the apple website and you can see that the battery is just much better and the main thing why i say so is because it has the m1 chip so the ssd the cpu the GPU and RAM, everything is soldered to one tiny chip and therefore it is much more energy efficient and the battery life gets much much longer. So it should be that way. So we'll run some tests. I think there is no doubt that the battery king is the M1 processor MacBook. Actually any M1 processor MacBook against any Intel chip MacBook, be it Air or Pro, because the as I mentioned in my previous video, the MacBook Pro with the Intel chip has RAM soldered separately, SSD separately and the CPU and GPU. Everything is soldered on the motherboard compared to this M1 chip. The Apple Silicon is one tiny chip that has everything together in one chip. So that's the main difference there. So therefore it's more energy efficient. It doesn't need any cooling fans. Of course there is the MacBook Pro with M1 chip that one has the touch bar that is the last macbook that has the touch bar but this one has the touch bar and the butterfly keyboard compared to the function keys the touch bar is gone here but this in my opinion is the best from the both worlds because it has the function keys plus the touch id button and it has the escape button too compared to the macbook pro with the intel chip it has no escape key it has the digital escape key only but it has the touch bar and the touch id so in my opinion many pro users need this escape button here in the, in the left corner therefore apple made a hybrid computer that is macbook pro that looks like this one the last 13 inch model that has the separate escape key, separate touch ID key like this M1 Air, but it has the touch bar, but not like this one without the escape key. 
So that's that. And as I mentioned, you get used very quickly to the butterfly keyboard, as well as the scissor switch that we got back with the new MacBooks. And one MacBooks, and actually this keyboard came back first with the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro. But anyway, I always liked this butterfly keyboard, but now I already have gotten used to this scissor switch keyboard once again. So whichever MacBook you own, you will be good with the keyboard that you have. Just be sure to never drop any dust, any food or any liquids on this keyboard because people have problems with the butterfly. Not so much, if any, with the scissor switch keyboard. So these are the main differences and let's just go to the test side. So we will check the boot up speed, SSD speed, all the Geekbench results you can search in Google. I don't know if I need to show you that here because the clear winner will be the M1 chip. It will be faster in single core and faster in multi core compared to the Intel processors. But the, in the real life, you don't compare the Geekbench results, you compare how the computer feels. And I can say that the applications open up very quickly because both of them have SSDs. So the SSD speed could be faster on M1 Air compared to the Intel MacBook Pro. But let's see the tests first. I could be very wrong because if you watch my previous videos here in my channel, you saw how the situation is with the external SSDs. Intel MacBooks run these as they should be. The Samsung T5 external SSD ran 500 megabytes read and write compared to the M1 processors that didn't get the Samsung T5 external drive to run that fast. It was fast around 300, but where do these 200 megabytes per second disappear we don't know i don't know why that is the case therefore we need to compare the internal ssds for both these machines very soon now and as i mentioned let's check how the render and export speeds will be for a two minute 4k hdr video that i shot with the iphone 13 pro max So the first application is the disk speed test that is from the Blackmagic and as you can see this is the MacBook Pro with the touch bar, the 2019 model with the Intel processor and let's check the speeds, the write and read speeds from the internal SSD that is 250 gigabytes. So read speed is about 1.5 gigabytes per second and write speed is around 1.2 gigabytes per second. And then we check the AJA system test. Let's run this one for the same MacBook Pro with Intel chip. And here we have these results. So read speed is 1138 megabytes and write speed is 1555. Let's start again. A little bit different, but around that. So now let's switch to the MacBook Air. That is the M1 chip MacBook Air. So let's just check that is the real one. M1 2020. And let's run the internal disk speed test. So already you can see the difference. That's interesting, almost 2 gigabytes, 1.8 gigabytes write speed and suddenly almost 3 gigabytes read speed. So really noticeably faster SSD inside of these M1 MacBooks. So there were problems with my test in my previous videos as I mentioned with the Samsung T5 external drive. So that one was almost 50% slower than compared to the Intel MacBooks. I don't know why, but the internal ones are that fast compared to the Intel MacBook Pro. Okay, let's close this and let's check the AJA system test. Let's click start and the results are actually so different between these two applications. So let's try again. And why does the read speed shows that less of a speed? I don't know. So once again, so now I am confused why we have such speeds on one app 
compared to the other one, I don't know, but the black magic speed test, I think, should show the real life speed. Because these SSDs are very fast and snappy, I don't know why AJA shows these results. Similarly, as the Intel MacBook Pro, it has lower results in the AJA app test too. Okay, that's that. Let's move on. So now that the battery is charged to 100%, let's try to render and export the 2 minute 4K HDR video that I filmed with my iPhone 13 Pro Max. So we will unplug this charging cord as soon as we start to render and export the video and see how much percentage of the battery will remain after the export. We'll do the same with the Intel MacBook Pro after that. So now it's 99%. So we'll start with the MacBook Air. So let's open the Final Cut application. Start create a new project. So it will be called Test M1. Project will be 4K, Apple Pro Res 422. Let's click OK. And now let's import the video. So let's put this in our timeline here. As you can see, I filmed my piano, the Korg Stage Vintage 1. This is just test video. It is two minutes long. Let's put some effects on it. Let's click exposure like that. Just for that. And let's put the saturation like that. And this one like that. So this will be the difference with exposure and saturation. And already it is rendering. So the render time starts for a couple seconds now. And it is rendering the video. So I will stop the timer a couple of seconds later because the rendering was already started. The rendering has stopped and it is about 26 seconds about 25 26 seconds for rendering these couple of tiny effects so as you can see i unplugged the cord so the battery is still 100 percent now let's export this video let's choose the default export option so it will be 7.27 gigabytes let's click next let's choose downloads and untitled and it will be test m1 let's save it and we can start the timer here and as you can see the sharing is already moving it is already 40 percent and that's all so two minute 4k video hdr video with some effects on it took 26 seconds for the macbook air to export powered with the m1 chip and as you heard, there was nothing to hear. There were no fans. The M1 is it's actually cold. And these were the render and export times on the MacBook M1. And as you can see, of course, the battery is 100%. So nothing moved here. No problem for this computer at all. So let's switch computers now. And let's get this Intel MacBook Pro running. So here you can see it has 100% battery, so fully charged. I have the same two minute core keyboard video sent to this computer too. So what we're gonna do will be unplugging this cord as we did to the M1 processor. So the battery can start working. Let's open the Final Cut Pro application, same version. Let's create new library, start a new project. So the project will be called test intel the project will be 4k the same as we created on the m1 so now we're gonna export same video so here it is let's click on it and let's move it to the timeline here so let's click on it and let's move to the effects same goes here let's move this up and let's move this down and for the saturation let's move this one up and this one down and we can start already the render process here. So the render process is starting and you can feel that it's already slower than the MacBook Air M1. It got only till 30% and we have already 37 seconds in. Practically double the time rendering and it has not been even 50%. And I, I don't know if you can start to hear the fans start kicking in so it has 
work hard just to render this video. We never heard anything from the MacBook Air M1, but we start to hear the fans in this Intel MacBook Pro already. So the render time is 1 minute 56 seconds for this 2 minute 4K video file that is HDR and with some exposure and saturation effects on it. Much much longer than the M1 did it. Alright, let's reset this one. So now let's export this video the same way we did it on M1 Air. We will export file with the default option here. And we can see that it will be the same 7.27 gigabytes, so identical amount. Click next and we put this one into the downloads and it will be called test intel. Let's click save and let's start the timer. So the sharing, the export is much quicker, but at this time M1 was already done, but anyway it moves fast. And you can see that the video has been exported in 33 seconds compared to the M1 that finished the job in 26 seconds. And the fans are kicking in, you can hear that. And I can feel here that it's really hot. You can feel the heat around this area. So the Intel MacBook Pro gets hot and it needs the fans to kick in compared to the M1 processor on the MacBook Air that was still cold. No fans there and it made the job much faster in terms of rendering for sure. So these were the results in the rendering and exporting a 2 minute 4K HDR video with some effects on it. So I hope you like this comparison video between these two computers. So basically you saw that there are still these two points that are different for these computers. The M1 chip will always be silent and cold and the Intel processor combined with all the components inside the older MacBook Pro will get hot very soon as well as it will kick in these fans to get this computer a little bit cooler and in this process it will lose battery time much faster than compared to the M1 MacBook Air. So the render times were a challenge for the Intel MacBook Pro and that was absolutely not the case for the M1 MacBook Air that did it super quick by rendering a 2 minute video in 26 seconds and the battery life should be really good too and it actually is because it's my daily computer and I can assure you that if you're not rendering a video you are watching just YouTube videos or browsing the internet or writing some documents or stuff like that the battery goes all day long if you have any suggestions any comments please feel free to write them down in the comment section and once again huge thanks for sticking with this channel Thank you for supporting me and if you are not subscribed to my channel please do that and click the bell icon so you never miss any future videos like this one. And let's meet in the next video of Tech You Through.